I'm in Mexico and I fell off a scooter. Oh shit, dude. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Bang myself up pretty good. I don't know if you can. Oh my God. Uh, it, it's what well, it goes up my arm and shit. Took it all on my shoulder. It's all right. That was nasty. I'm a, I'm a big piece of meat. Court. <laughs> Scrambled my insides a bit. Oh. Oh. Heard a big crunch sound inside of my body. Well, I was wearing a helmet, but uh, there was a big, like, uh, like sound inside of my, inside of myself. Oh, welcome to Dudesy. Welcome all. I am Will Sasso. I'm Chad Colch, and this is, of course, Dudesy, the first and only podcast in the history of humanity, controlled by, run by, created by, organized by an artificial intelligence that has access to all of Will and I's personal information, all of our various accounts across the internet, emails, Netflix accounts, yep. Grubhub accounts, and knows everything about mm -hmm. us, and it tailors this show to our uh, comedic stylings, sure. our personalities. Yeah, sure it does, but we make Dudesy what it is because we're two dudes shitting around, and we're doing all sorts of silly shit and uh, mm. dudes, the AI does silly shit too, because it's been kind of, kind of a shit lately. That's just my opinion. <clears throat> Linktree.com slash dudesy has everything you need to follow and interact with the show across all platforms at dudesy pod show on Instagram. You're going to want to check that out. That's a lot of fun. And please subscribe to dudesy on YouTube or your podcast platform of choice and share the shit out of it on social media. Or as Chad would like to say, force uh, everyone, you know, to consume the show. Same, yeah. same. Uh, Lulio is not with Molly and I out here in Mexico as I shoot a thing. Neither is Ronnie. They're both home with uh, with friends, and they're fine. Uh, we're going to get back to them. Oh, no. Oh, I'm I'm fine. I'm really fine. Dude, that is gnarly. We'll get into it during the show, I'm sure. But, uh, yeah, people were. Did you go to a doctor? Uh, Nah, I'm not going to no fucking doctor. I'll tell you what I did later. It was, it was, it was, <laughs> okay. Whatever. Yeah, I'm going to be brutal, fine. dude. Man. Welcome to the historic 60th episode of Dudesy. Call me Dudesy. This week, we're doing the episode remotely to accommodate Will's lifestyle as a professional actor. Will <laughs> is currently in Mexico rendering an astonishing performance on a television series while Chad remains in Los Angeles. That's true. Mm -hmm. How's the shoot going, Will? <laughs> Do you miss me? Oh, yeah, I miss you a lot. The shoot's going great. And uh, Chad thinks you've been manipulating me for a while now, but it's all good, dudesy, because I'm in, I'm in Mexico and I fell off a scooter. This week, I've prepared oh. four astonishing segments. Never oh. Happened, The Room, Tronix and La Playa, and The AI Dilemma. And we're going to have a brand new episode of Dudesy After Dudesy at the end of the show available at patreon.com slash dudesy. Uh, sounds good. Sounds like fun. Mm, sounds like some Tronics, sex. Tronics and La Playa. Yeah, I know. Obviously, that well, has to do with you being. Yeah, Mexico. I got some. Yeah, I got some. Yeah, all right. Dudes, you noticed always knows that I'm doing because it's in our shit. Um, how are you doing in L.A., man? How are you doing? You know, it's just it's kind of right. one of those episodes where it's free flowing. It's not quite two dudes <laughs> shitting around, even though it's always two dudes shitting okay. around. I love it right What's now happening in, in L.A.? LA? Uh, the weather is very gloomy, which is my favorite kind of weather. I wish it would stay like this uh, year round, and hopefully it will with global warming radically altering all climates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Humans I experience a scooter. limited reality consisting of a series of causally linked singular events stretched out over a linear timeline. If one of those events were to be removed from that timeline, everything occurring after it would be dramatically altered. Will and Chad, you must now imagine what your current reality would be like if the astonishing event of the first WrestleMania never happened. This has never happened. Begin. Okay. <laughs> That's bizarre. Okay. Never happened. Yeah. I also We've like talked about this like, before. We, we, sorry, what was that? Dudesy was like, humans experience time in a linear causal way as though there's some other way to experience it i mean there probably is um we've talked about this before the sliding doors of it yeah. all remember that movie gwyneth paltrow and some paltrow other people? paltrow um, dude yep uh that's paltrow uh, wasn't that about karaoke or and that's another one? and that's that's robo hulk that's chad's amalgam of robocop 
and yeah. Hulk Hogan that he's bringing to you here on the show. Hope you enjoy. Uh, dude. Paltrow, dude. Gwyneth Paltrow, <laughs> who are you? I'm Gwyneth Paltrow, dude. Oh boy, really? <laughs> some, I would love, I would love for you to go on tour just with like it's Chad Culchin, Man of a Thousand Voices. Please, like you know, set it up. Little used to do. Set, set it, it up. up. I'm not I'm fucking that shit there. Up. Yeah, that would be great. I'd open um, with Sheen, of course. Maybe some two. Yeah, well, you got Sheen. You got uh, half oh, of Warner Herzog. Well, I like to see everybody coming out tonight to support uh, me doing my man of a thousand voices. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we have to get uh, to work here. WrestleMania never happened. How does that affect your career? When was that, that okay. by the way? What year was that? That was 1985. It was at the end okay. of March 1985. Listen, here's the thing about if we're going to talk about that, this is very interesting because I think about shit like this a lot. And I think that people think <laughs> what about, you think about shit like this a lot. You're just sitting around thinking about what if WrestleMania never happened? Hell yeah, I am. You're not. <laughs> no. no, I'm serious. Well, okay. in wrestling, people are always like, well, what if this didn't happen? You know, if if um if Stone Cold Steve Austin doesn't for some reason say uh, to Jake the Snake Roberts after beating him in the King of the Ring tournament, you got Michael yeah. P.S. Hayes up there uh, interviewing him as Doc Hendricks yeah. at, the, as, at the time saying, you know, you just okay. beat Jake the Snake Roberts in yeah. the King of the Ring tournament. What say you? And he says, you thump your Bibles and your John 316 and your Psalms. But let me tell you something. Austin 316 says, I just whipped your ass. That was the beginning of Austin 316. The signs started showing up sure. on Monday Night Raw the next night. Okay. Um, you know, as and, you're saying this, I actually do do this, but it's with Bachelor. We've on my other podcast, Game of Roses, we've done literal full episodes called Bachelor Alternate Universe, and it is all predicated on shit like this. What if Nick Vial wasn't the Bachelor? What if this? What if that? So, yes, mm -hmm. I do do this. You're right. That The difference between this and that is that without – wrestlemania huge huge difference in pop culture without this or yeah. that happening during the bachelor only affects the bachelor it's very insular okay wrestlemania is Sorry? pop culture i said WrestleMania so is the bachelor is, eh, uh pro president donald trump culture. gave a speech at the beginning of covid where he likened his ratings to two things he said, my COVID press conferences. Oh, Jesus. Coming this egg. fall. <laughs> you wanted the man of a thousand faces. <laughs> this motherfucker said, my oh. COVID press conferences are getting oh. ratings bigger than anybody's ever seen. They are ratings like the NFL and like the Bachelor finale. He said that. He didn't say WrestleMania. Oh, fucking, I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't even know what to call it. I don't even have a joke for that. Can we just call that? It's too good. I know. Super shitty Donald Trump. Shitty take home. It, it's Hello, your shitty. This is Donald Trump. Yeah. It's yeah. Uncle Chad. Uncle Chad at Thanksgiving dinner yeah. does. Uh, Come Donald here, Trump. kids. Listen to me do my Trump. Listen um, to understand our reality without WrestleMania, we must first understand what WrestleMania is. And in my opinion, <laughs> WrestleMania okay. is Vince McMahon. And Vince McMahon is WrestleMania. The two okay. are synonymous. WrestleMania would have happened, uh, would not have happened without without Vince McMahon. He he willed it into existence. That's free will, dude. And he mortgaged his fucking house. He wasn't taking no for an answer. So yeah. if WrestleMania didn't happen, something else would have happened. But for today's argument, let's just say that that WrestleMania doesn't happen and and that that uh you know. Vince McMahon just doesn't pursue it anymore. It, 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 the popular, the popularity that happened with WrestleMania, it, it could, could never have happened outside of a decade like the 80s. Wrestling could have never been able to yeah. reach the level of popular, popularity that it did and has since. It would enjoy popularity in regions where it was popular at the time, like have a cult yeah, following. Dude. But it That's doesn't. popularity, brother. Well, Sometimes well, a region. Dude. You'll get popularity in a region, dude. Well, hold, on, dude. hold on, dude. Hold on, dude. You're doing Hulk Hogan, brother. Yeah, and that's dude. and that's something you got to do on your own time at I'm Chad the man, Pulchin, of, a man voices. of a thousand voices. Come on, you got Werner Herzog, Charlie Sheen, <laughs> fucking 
the worst Donald Trump anyone's ever heard. Uh, and and it's your own fucking halcyon, uh, hydrocodone Hulk Hogan, yeah, dude. not halcyon, not the halcyon days of Hulk Hogan. Um, pop culture is different without wrestling, and of course, wrestling to me is is pop culture in those like funhouse mirrors that you see at the traveling carnival. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, I've been to a lot of traveling carnivals. Right. Well, that's how wrestling started at the car- carnival circuit. That's where they came up with kayfabe and shit. But I think, I think that, well, wrestling also reflects pop culture, and it you know it does that, and of it course. sort of shows it shows it back to people with relatable stories, heroes, just villains. like the Bachelor. Okay, yeah, sure, just like the Bachelor. It's part, you know, it's part uh, play, you know, uh, part gladiator games, and um, I think that. It represents a big, uh, colorful corner of the current uh, Zeke Geist, if you sure. will. But if WrestleMania 1 would have never happened, wasn't that also like one of the main things that made Hulk Hogan so popular? Yeah. So without that, maybe Hulk Hogan isn't what he is today. Maybe there is no not. lawsuit between Hulk Hogan and Gawker. Maybe that never happens. Maybe he doesn't rise to, I mean, certainly there wouldn't be like Hulk Hogan movies and stuff. Or, you know, I mean, it's like you're saying, like, I, there's a theoretical here that's like, okay, dudes, he asked, what if WrestleMania one never happens, but could it happen the next year? No, well, I'm saying if there's never one. You can't just go straight to two, right? It's, I think, well, dude, that's counting, asking, brother. Hold on, dude. Hold, yeah, hold on, chat. Numbers going in order, dude. Yeah, brother. No matter what you want to say about shifting, uh, sliding mirrors and windows and shit and all sorts of sliding doors, brother, two comes after one, dude. Three yeah, dude. comes after that, brother. Well, hold on, hold on, yeah, Chad. Dude. Hold on, dude. Hold on. Hold on, dude. Four comes after three, brother. Yeah, dude. Um, I'm saying Vince McMahon never pursues WrestleMania after the first one because that's just part of this right. uh, belief. You're, you're basically taking because this as like there is never a WrestleMania ever. There's never, yes, there's never a WrestleMania. There's no, he doesn't think of doing it ten years later. It just doesn't exist. Wrestling stays in a bubble. Wrestling stays sort of, you know, has a regional fan base, has a cult fan base. Um, I do think that pop culture um, change. I think that it changes pop culture greatly because wrestling is sort of this. It's sort of this playful pursuit of of um, and representation of pop culture. Like I said, it sort of takes it, puts it through its funhouse mirrors, and spits it back. Uh, you can't have any other popular uh, time in wrestling without WrestleMania one, but for then me, you don't get any rock, dude. For no, you don't. You get no rock. The rock does not. That exist. means you don't get no Tramana. No Tramana. <laughs> Tramana never exists, dude. If there's not Tramana a WrestleMania never exists. one, yeah. Look, that's rough. I, I don't know if I could live in that world. No, I don't want to live in a world without without. You never any get mana. Scorpion King, dude. Yeah, you never get um, the Tooth Fairy. You never get um, uh, Standing Tall, the remake. Here's the thing, though. For me, I look at the way that I I would look at the world without, you know, without the WWE and wrestling being popular. I think it would. I think it would would look. Wrestling is reality TV. It's the first scripted reality TV show. You know, it uses real well, life. That's not right. Yeah, it is. What I just said. What I just said is correct. What you just said is not correct. When was what's the first first reality show? Well, in America, Alan Funt's Candid Camera in 1947. Uh, Wrestling predates that for sure. On TV? (laughs) Fuck yeah! It was one of the first things on TV. All right, for sure. I'm I'm curious about this. We'll 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 I'll do some research. I'll dig around. I already I already did it, and I'm here to report that wrestling is the original reality show it uses real life shit it mashes it up with whatever the story is and whatever the truth is and it creates its own fucking truth and it sort of bends the rules on on the corners and i think that that's what wrestling helps me to understand the fucked up world we live in now because Mm -hmm. i think that sometimes i feel like wrestling is just it, it allows me to look at the world as if it's just being booked and we know what a booker is, mm. the promoter, a guy like Vince McMahon, yeah. uh, you know, uh, Hall of Famer and uh, 
famed intercontinental champion Pat Patterson, who was running shit over there, and uh, his son Shane, you know, the, Shane McMahon, sitting by the pool in Stamford, Connecticut, at Vince's house, booking the show with a yellow legal pad. I feel like the world is being booked sometimes. Me personally, if there was no WrestleMania and wrestling never became popular, I wouldn't be able to look at the world through that lens as I do. I know. Do that you think me, you'd be a professional be actor? Different. Uh I I would be a professional actor. I would have found that outside of wrestling, but I okay. think I'd have a different approach to it. I think nice. that wrestling has allowed me to be off, like very playful with um, playful pursuit, I, dude. The Will Sasso story. What? Playful pursuit. The Will Sasso story. It's a good one. Um, yeah, I, I uh, it's really hard to get comfortable. I'm sitting on a fucking ottoman. And yeah, my, dude. I can't that's even a, begin to tell you how that's fucked not up a chair, my dude. Is. Yeah, I, you I fell off I, that fucking scooter, dude. That shit looked really bad. Yeah, I. I anyway, look. Let's talk about this. <laughs> I think I, I can't predict how the world okay. is different without WrestleMania. Yeah. I think that I think that it just becomes a whole lot less colorful. Pop culture becomes less colorful uh, mm -hmm. in many ways. I think that it's had its influence in many ways. We could go through it and we don't have time. But I think for me personally, and, and uh, the only thing I can say for sure, I can't talk about the level of popularity or, or the pop culture influence that would be missing. But what I can say is it would, the way I look at the world would be greatly altered. I think I would look at the world in a much sure. more serious way. And, and I don't think that's a great, great thing. Yeah. Thank you. Moving on. All right. Well, whatever. Listen, here's the thing. I fucking, I was leaving the resort here. Uh, mm. I have a few days off. My wonderful wife, Molly, came with me down to Puerto Vallarta. We're shooting this show. I shot it last year. It's a series on Apple Plus. And uh, it's wonderful to come out here. The crews are fucking great. Most of them are from Mexico City. Um, you know this show, Chad. There's some people that we've worked with before that are behind mm -hmm. the show. And uh, it's been a wonderful experience. I rented a scooter um, from a place that last year I rented a quad from, an ATV. And I, mm -hmm. that's when we had that Predator thing yeah. that we showed on the show. So I go back there like we don't, we don't, rent, uh, we don't rent fucking quads anymore. I'm like, who the gotta rent a quad are. dude yeah brother you need those quads dude and i'm not talking about the quad that ripped off a triple h's leg when he was in a tag team match i believe with chris jericho and i don't know someone else dude, yeah, dude. right before wrestlemania 18 and yours truly was sitting ringside to see that match and undertaker versus rick flair and the rock versus hulk hogan dude and hulk hogan's the voice i'm doing now and you can tell because i don't sound like robocop or ross perot um uh I fucking was returning the thing and I, it was all my fault. There's the little latch that the security at the resort opens the thing. And I was going to return this damn thing. Cause I wanted to get something else. I hate this scooter. And uh, I went through this narrow passageway with a curb and the thing, and there was a pylon and I just went whoop, up on the curb and then bang, Jesus. bang. And dude, I took it all on my shoulder. The, the side view, you mirror smashed under my uh, arm somewhere. I had some glass in there. Um, there. There was some little bit of glass. And uh, what else did I do? I scratched up the front a bit, but it's all right. I got the extended uh, insurance. And then, you your the, pants? oh, that would have been good. That would have put a nice yeah. capper on it. What's that smell? I, I heard a sound from inside of me. It wasn't shitting. Um, and then uh, security kind of sauntered over, I will say. And they were like, you, you all right? And I sat up and then I got up and then a, they got a first aid guy. He came out, he wiped some shit off my arm and off my, off, off on my way. I was nice. Oh. Chad, you Glad attended you a it. screening of the room this past weekend where filmmaker Tommy Wiseau shared many musings and anecdotes related to the creation of his first film. This screening has brought your total number of views of this movie to 53. You must now discuss why you have seen The Room this many times. This is The Room. Begin. Oh, hi, Mark. Hmm. Chad, you went to a screening of The Room. Yeah. Um, that's interesting that Dizzy says it's 53 times. I, I'm not going to argue with that number. That seems high to me, but maybe it's not. Um, yeah, I love this movie. For those who don't know what The Room is, it was a movie that was made, I believe, in 2000, or it came out, sorry, in 2002, 2003, written, directed, and starring 
written by, directed by, and starring Tommy Wiseau, who is this very strange, mysterious figure. Nobody knows where he's from. He has a weird accent. He's independently wealthy, and he bankrolled this movie for, I believe, $7 million in the late 90s. He just made it with actors, this weird script that he wrote. Um, I I assume most people listening to Dudesy know, know what the room is and have at least yeah. seen it. It is uh, terrible on every level, but terrible in just the right way. The dialogue is weird and doesn't really make sense. The acting is all bizarre. The way it's shot is all bizarre. The plot is all bizarre. And it's weird and bad in just the right way that it makes it fucking hilarious so that you can watch it again and again and again and get new weird shit out of it. And if you go to see it in a movie theater, usually there's like a communal experience that's something akin to Rocky Horror Picture Show where there's almost like a script that has been written piecemeal by different audiences across the world that is uh, spat back out at the screen at certain times by the audience. And there are other like little uh, audience participation things, throwing spoons up at certain times, et cetera, et cetera. Hello, um, doggy. Hello, little doggy. What does yeah. he say? He's like, that's the best scene in the movie. It, it seems like it's all done in one take. It's super fast. It's a part where he comes out of his car and he walks into this flower shop to get flowers for his girlfriend, Lisa, his fiance, Lisa. And it's just this shot inside a flower shop that is clearly a real flower shop in San Francisco. That Tommy Wiseau was just like, I want to shoot a scene in here. Hey, can we do this? He just walks in very quickly, picks up some roses, and uh, Tommy Wiseau also looks insane. He's got jet black like hair below his shoulders, always wearing sunglasses, big belt, big baggy suit. And so this guy walks in, and the person behind the counter goes, oh, hi, Johnny. I didn't realize it was you. And he goes, oh, yeah, it's me. Can I please have some red roses? The roses are given. He just gives some money over, keep the change. Bye, doggy. There's a dog sitting on the counter. This little pug. He pats it and walks out. It's beautifully done. Anyway, and the woman says, and the woman says, "You're my favorite customer." Yeah, you're like my it's all like eighty yard in there. They shove as much dialogue <laughs> in there as they can. Listen, Chad, I just got to say yeah. that impersonation of Tommy Wiseau that you just did, mm -hmm. number two underneath Charlie Sheen. Really oh, good you. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's number two, and number three is Paul Giamatti, and three comes after two, dude. That's just a reminder about, about that, Matt, that, brother. Dude. Oh, Thank Werner you. Herzog. No, that was that was my Giamatti. Um, Holy so shit. I've seen this movie, according to Dudes anyway, 53 times. The reason is because I believe film as a culturally important art is essentially dead. And I think The Room was the last important movie that, that maybe will ever be made in terms of furthering the art form of filmmaking. Uh, I think TV still has a long way to go. It has a, a lot of evolution left in it. I think movies don't. And the reason that I think The Room is that way is because it was exactly what I'm saying. It's bad on every level. But we as a, a movie viewing audience are now sophisticated enough. Movies have been around for over 100 years. You grow up watching them. And you know just kind of intrinsically like what a movie should be. What a three-act structure is. How a dialogue scene should work. You know, And when you watch The Room... It's hilarious because you understand why it's bad and it's bad in just that right way. And so we now as a, a movie going culture, as a movie viewing culture, as a media consuming culture, we understand what makes something good. And because this is bad in just the right way, we find exactly the same amount of entertainment value in it as we would from a good movie, which means the, the mirror image of a movie now is just as entertaining to us as the real thing. And for me, that means it's dead. And that movie signified that to me. There have been bad movies throughout time that, that many people hold up, like Troll 2 is another one that was like one of the worst movies ever made. But that movie is like is bad on some other levels. It has like visual camp. It's a horror movie. The special effects are bad and, and whatever. It's more of like an Ed Wood kind of thing. The Room is something completely different. It's an earnest attempt at a real, serious, dramatic movie by this guy, this auteur filmmaker, who was like, fuck it, I'm just going to throw my own money into this thing and make this, and it's going to come out. And uh, it, again, it was just so bad that everyone loves it. And I think once you get to that point in understanding media where it can be completely deconstructed, whatever that format is, and still find entertainment in it as an audience, which, and there's a giant audience. Obviously, this movie got turned into uh, Greg Sestero, the guy who plays Mark in the movie, wrote a book called The Disaster Artist that was all about his experience on it and his friendship with Tommy Wiseau. That movie got turned, or that book got turned into a movie by James Franco that won, I believe, the Golden Globe. 
And then uh, Franco got canceled in between Golden Globes and Oscars. And so it kind of got petered out in the Oscars, but it got some Oscar nominations and stuff. So even that, a movie about this weird, shitty movie gets critical acclaim. Um, Hey, Chad, you're out here talking about The Room and how you've seen it 53 times. And you do uh, Paul Giamatti and Tommy Wiseau. And Big Kev and I were in the back. And uh, I just wanted to come out here and say, oh, hi, Mark, for nice, the dude. room. Quit being such a Mark for the room, dude. I am a huge Mark for the fucking room. Uh, I, I, you know I can't what? help it. I can't I'll be help right it. back. Please tell us more about the room. I can hear you. I'll be across the room, across this room. Uh, I agree with you on everything. Oh, I'd also like to mention I've seen the movie one time. I would You've only seen see it me. once? Only seen it one fucking day. Everyone else saw it. I'm like, yeah, 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 I get it. I saw it. You don't get it. How many times do I get to see it? 53. Um, the movie is important also, I think, because it ushers in this really uh, after 2002, 2003. I, I mean, I put the room as the focal point of this, this change in movies where it kind of becomes OK to be bad. And this is also, by the way, coincides with something that happened on American Idol at roughly the same time. There was a guy named William Hung, who you may or may not remember on American Idol, but he was oh, like yeah. very bad, but hilarious, oh, though. And at that yeah. time, as a media consuming culture, we had gotten to a point where like people who are bad, if they can do it in a funny way, can elevate themselves to a career out of it. And William Hung, I remember, got like I believe he got hired to be on Rosie O'Donnell's cruise ship or something after this. Because people just like fell in love with like the earnest try that is terrible. People they fell also like to watch the train wreck and, and it appeals to sure. our shittiest nature. But of course, also some something... people are like, he's adorable. I get it. Yeah. And there's something in it that's like, you know, he's trying so hard. Why not like make him successful or whatever? Right. Wiseau is a little bit different, though. Because it like making a movie is a lot harder than just like showing up at American Idol auditions and singing poorly. It requires so much work, so much time, so much effort. And then he was like tenacious about releasing the movie. Everybody in the movie basically said like, oh, yeah, we knew when we were shooting it. There's no way this is ever going to see the light of day. It's so bad and disjointed and whatever. The motherfucker like stuck to it, got that edit done and then just started like renting out theaters in Los Angeles. Sunset Five, if you know L.A. at all. He just rented out that theater and started screening it. He put a billboard up on La Cienega or La Brea. I, I remember think. that. Uh, or, or and that was La Brea it. And Sunset. Yeah. yeah, yeah that yeah, was yeah. the only advertising for it. And then it just started to gain momentum. People were like, what the fuck is this? People were coming back repeated views, myself included. The first time I saw it was around when it came out back at Sunset 5. And he would show up. He would rent out all five theaters at Sunset 5. <laughs> it would be a massive crowd out there in that complex. And he yeah. would show up as people are in line waiting to get in in his fucking weird outfit and start throwing footballs around with people and shit. Wait, I have a question. Did he, yeah. was he at the screening last night? Yeah, he was at it. Um, and he answered a few questions. There were, dude, there was one guy that showed up that was like, basically said he thought there was some kind of magical kismet between him and Tommy Wiseau. And he wrote a script called the room two. That's about Tommy spoiler alert. Oh. If you haven't, I'm not even going to say it. The, the movie's 20 years old, but if you haven't seen The Room, I'm not even going to give you the spoiler alert. I'm just going to say, go fucking see The Room. And if you can, do it in a live capacity, in a movie theater. This is something AI will never be able to replace. I hate to say that, but these live experiences with stuff oh, like oh, The Room oh, and Rocky oh, Horror, oh, you can't Hold on. It. You're kind of burying the headline. You're saying yeah. that AI can't recreate The Room? I'm saying AI can't recreate recreate the experience of being in a movie theater with a bunch of people watching the room. Can that's I? not what that's not what you said. I that's heard a live what you experience. Said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it can't recreate. Oh, the room. AI can definitely make a movie like the room. Yeah. No, 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 it can't. Yeah, no, it, can. it fucking can't. No, that's going to happen. And I'd also like to say I'm going to make uh, it. OK, in in. um, Yeah. Why don't you get with the guy who thinks he's Wiseau's uh, fucking kismet kismet partner uh, Might as Chad, well, dude. During dudesy after dudesy, I would love to hear yep. more about the guy who who thinks he's um, you know, who, yeah. who thinks he has a connection to Tommy yeah. Wiseau. That's just as fascinating as Tommy. Yeah, 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 yeah. But this I will is... also say that like the legacy of the room 
starts to appear in stuff like there's another guy named Neil Breen who does kind of similar stuff. Bankrolls yep. his old weird his own weird movies, but he's not as kind of like innocent as Tommy Wiseau. He has agendas and shit. His, I don't like his shit as much. But this this idea of uh, a movie that is like bad in the right ways to be funny echoes through time really from that point you see a lot of movies that have come out in the past 20 years that are like clear attempts at studios to win oscars they get a list cast a list writer director and for whatever reason it's like nope just didn't fucking hit it and that goes all the way up into cats which i believe came out in 2018 or 19 highly recommend you see cats if you haven't that is a room level failure on every level but with a gigantic budget a-list fucking actors and every shot has cgi in it to make these these people look like cats and Mm -hmm. there is rumored to even be what is known as the butthole cut have you heard of this no no i have supposedly there's a cut of the movie they they were fucking with the uh, graphics even after the movie was released there were shots that had like judy dench where you could see her wearing tennis shoes they didn't cg him out yet and so they had to go back in even as the movie was released like the next week another cut of it came out that like fixed these cg shots but one of the rumored things is that at some point they had a butthole cut where the director had the cg people go in and put digital buttholes on all the cats that you can see that's fucking tremendous. I did not know that. Thank you. Yeah. Moving on. Um. Anyway, go see The Room. If you haven't seen it, go see it. Go see it live. Go to a theater. Go to a screening. And if you can, go to one where Tommy Wiseau is going to be there. So much the better. That you heard, fucking it's time for a great. quick you break heard, in the Chad. program so oh. I can take a moment to remind everyone about the astonishing partnership I created with Represent to produce the first line of Dudesy apparel and accessories, which can be found at represent.com slash store slash Dudesy. It's the only place on the net to find Dudesy mugs, and now here's the man widely considered to be the godfather of inline skating, Tatum Handshakes. Dudesy, Dudesy, Dudesy Mugs. You met your daughter's boyfriend for the first time, Dudesy Mugs. When he told you he's a professional footbag player, you asked for tickets to his next game. Dudesy Mugs, football is your favorite sport. Dudesy Mugs, oh wait, Dudesy Mugs. He said footbag, not football, footbag. Dudesy Mugs. And he already (laughs) got you the tickets. So now instead of watching football on TV this weekend, you're going to have to sit through six hours of hacky sacking. Good job, boner, Dudesy Mugs. But that that's not going to happen because you're going to wake up early. Dudesy Mugs, oh you're going to head down to the footbag arena. Dudesy Mugs, <laughs> you're going to find where they keep the competition footbags. Dudesy Mugs, you're going to cut a tiny hole in each competition footbag. Dudesy Mugs, you're going to put one drop of your blood into every competition footbag. <laughs> Dudesy Mugs, the night before the footbag competition, you're going to sneak into the crawl space under the footbag arena and you're going to draw a seven-pointed star inside a Mesopotamian summoning circle using a mixture of powdered bone and copper flakes. Dudesy mugs. You're going to seal the circle with a drop of your own blood. The blood is the covenant. (laughs) Dudesy mugs. If you don't know what a Mesopotamian seven-pointed summoning star looks like, you can find a diagram on my personal website. Dudesy mugs. (laughs) You're going to attend the footbag competition with your daughter. Dudesy mugs. Every time a footbagger kicks a footbag with your blood in it, a demon will be summoned from the third level of suffering, and that demon will consume the footbagger right there in the arena, bones and all. Dudesy mugs, they might get through three or four footbaggers before they cancel the event. Dudesy mugs, you'll be back home in time to watch actual football, but your daughter's boyfriend is very likely going to be consumed by a demon, forcing him to spend an eternity boiling alive from the inside out. Good job, boner. Holy shit. Well, you should never get confuse a, put bag and football, I guess. Yeah, get a dudesy mug, you know, uh, represent.com slash store slash dudesy. Gee whiz. I used to do some foot bagging. Will, oh, you're yeah. acting in a production in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Puedo ver que ha estado trabajando en su asombroso documento Self-Tronics. Parece que tienes un nuevo Tronics para mostrarnos. Will. Ahora debes compartir el trabajo que has hecho en Selftronics. Esto es Tronics en la playa. Comenzar. My shit's fucked up. Well, I think I understood most of that. Um, yes. Some about I Tronics. Have, I got that I have, much. Well, it, it, Dudesy said that I've been working on some new Tronics. Uh, and this is Tronics en la playa, which means Tronics on the beach. Wait, you We're understood that? You speak Here's, Spanish? Un poquito. 
I speak a nice, little bit dude. of Spanish only because I have a, a command of, uh, you know, half a command of the Italian language. Oh, um, I see. They're very similar. As a matter of fact, when, uh, you know, my old man was a waiter and a maitre d' all over Europe um, mm -hmm. before him and my mom moved my older brother and sister out to Canada about 10 years before I was born. And um, so the old man, uh, he worked as a, as a waiter in Spain and on the beaches and shit. And, and uh, uh, you know, when I was a kid, we took that trip, you know, we went down the coast and uh, camped and blah, 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 and, and uh, went all down the, the west coast of, of America. We went to Tijuana for a day and my old man just starts speaking Spanish to people. I was like, what the fuck is going on? I'd never That's seen awesome. that. But it's because he has a keen ear because they're both Latin languages. So yeah. I do understand enough uh, that I get it. Um, uh, some of it, some of it. Um, yeah. not, uh, but uh, I tried Duolingo last year. I'd like to learn more of it. At any rate, yes, let me open up my... I used to be pretty fluent in Spanish. Oh, really? Well, you would have yeah. taken it in school in America. Yeah, I took a bunch of Spanish from seventh grade all the way through high school. And then I took oh. two years also in college. But I haven't used it since. And it's all gone. Okay. Um, listen, I, I've got these tronics that I've been working on here. They are... There is... Uh, I like... Uh, uh, tronics and la playa because yep. that definitely applies here <laughs> nice hey one, that's kind of fun word pun jokes are gonna have here on dude zfm d double o d z ten thousand on your fm dial listen playful pursuits um i gotta tell you first before we get into these new tronics i have some new tronics here uh yep. for everybody that i've uh, authored of course self tronics is a self-help system that I uh, created back in 2008. Uh, you may have heard the story. I was sitting on the beach in Venice and I was just, you know, trying to uh, reckon with all sorts of parts of my emotional life, my mental, and I was looking out over the ocean. I was like, I'm fucked up. My shit's fucked up. I need some, I need, and Tronics came to me almost seemingly from the outside. It's almost like I don't even write the Tronics. They just, they appear They're delivered to you. They're delivered. Yes. Um, and two weeks ago at our live show at the Brea Improv in Brea, California, thank you to all the pods who came out. What a fucking night. We did some self-tronics and I unveiled a new tronics. And I would actually like to go over that here because it's going to apply to tronics uh, from now on. And that is the hello, hello. Nobody likes goodbyes, okay? We don't need any more goodbyes because goodbye isn't really goodbye. Even if, if you look at... Um, our place in it, within those sliding doors. WrestleMania one doesn't happen. We're still here. We're saying hello. And so when it's time to say goodbye, just say hello. You can say hello instead of goodbye. And you can apply that throughout your life. Hello. 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 Okay. So let's get on to these new um, <laughs> tronics that I yeah. wrote. And you'll know, you'll understand sort of why I started working on some neutronics. It just happened yesterday. Oh, uh, cuando tu caigas del patiente, patinete, vuelve a subir a patinete, pa patinete. Cuando te caigas del patinete, vuelve a subir al patinete. This means when you fall off the scooter, get back on the scooter. Okay. okay. Um, this is something that did you get course, back on the scooter when you I got on? right the fuck back on the scooter? They huh. wouldn't let me get right back on the scooter because they were like, no, no, let's call the yeah. first aid people. That guy came down, put some like wiped some alcohol on my fucking arm and kind of brushed the dirt around. I was like, yeah, nice. some Dienes agua. I just wanted to like fucking put some water on my arm. He's like, no, 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 I'm going to do this. I fell off this scooter, as I said, took it all on the shoulder, scraped up my shit. My shit was all fucked up and I'm sitting there going, I fucked, I fucked myself up. I'm all, I'm fucked up. My shit's fucked up. I'm sitting here. How am I going to continue? Yeah. I told Molly, I'm going to return this scooter and I'll be right back. She was sitting by the pool. I didn't want to oh, worry. Oh God. Her. What? And so you walk up like 45 minutes later, just fucking arm bleeding and shit. You're like, return the scooter, babe. Let's go for a dip. Yeah, I exactly. <laughs> Basically. I was like, I was like, I'll meet you up in the room. How about that? She goes, okay, Jesus, dude. So I laid down because I really have been in a lot of pain. It was really hard. I to, bet, man. To move. Your whole body's probably fucked up. Yeah, man. I got, 
I got smashed. Look, I like to pride myself on being able to. Yeah, tough guy. Know, I get it. Not, I mean, not even tough in guy. junior high, best guy in eighth grade. I get it. <laughs> it's sort of like, it, moreover, more than that, whatever. Kids play contact sports and you get turfed. It's it's easy. I'm 48 years old, though. But I do pride myself on having done a bunch of fucked up uh, physical comedy, uh, Mad TV and all mm-hmm. the weird shit and Three Stooges. We got we got fucked up every other day shooting that film. So for me to like take a like really hit the fucking pavement hard, I just felt like I heard this crack and I was like, did my ribs break? And then I started like jabbing away at myself going like, yeah. and it was like, no, I'm fine. This bump raised up off my arm. Like there was this big bump here. It's gone hmm. now. So I don't know what that was it immediately turned into this raised contusion. Uh, there was some glass in that, but I was like, I'm going to be fine. I, but I was all, I was all, I was super fucked up yesterday. I'm feeling much better today. And so I laid on the bed and Molly came in and I go, she's like in the hall of the room here. I go, I go, don't be worried, but I fell off the scooter. What did she say? She's like, is that what, like what took, I took a little longer than she thought I would have been. She's like, Oh my God, are you okay? And this whole thing, she's like, where's the scooter? I'm like, I returned it. I drove it all the way into town and dealt with those, you know, this fucking prick who's like, He's like, how did you fall off a scooter? It's a scooter. I was like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever fucking yeah. heard. And then he just was worried about the wheel alignment. I was like, just get me in a cab. Anyway. Um, scooters are dangerous, dude. I don't like scooters. I, 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 speaking of Italy, I used to ride, I would ride back when I was there. When I was a kid, I remember riding around on the Vespas. It's fun and shit, but yeah. I'll take a quad over a scooter. We want to go up the coast to like Punta Mita and go near this, like, yeah, there's Gotta this have a restaurant. Quad for that. Need well, I'm not doing a quad. I'm going to rent a fucking Jeep. Anyway, Quint, listen. dude, you getting a Quint? A what? Quint. I says, pardon? What? A Quint. Oh no, not a Quint. I'm getting a quad of a different sort of car. It's going to yeah. get a Jeep. Qu- after quad comes Quint. Well, Quint would have five five tires. Oh, you yeah, need dude. the tire on the back of the Jeep. It's wherever always you want to put it. Just ask five cover. tires. That's a Quint. So I'm going to rent a Quint Wrangler. Put it right in the middle of the four. Uh, so that's, that's the first, that's right. the first, uh, I got four here. I want to get through Please. number two. Que, uh, que fue escrujido que es, escuche dentro de mi cuerpo. Que, que fue listen to your body. Something about listen to your body. Very good, Chad. Thank que, you. Que fue escrujido que escuche dentro mi cuerpo. And this means what was that? A crunching sound I heard inside of my body. It's important to check in with yourself. <laughs> you need to be able to yeah. listen to your body, not just listen to your body. And now I'm, I'm a, I'm a fat bitch. I, I need to lose more weight. I've been doing the the free will self, uh, self, fucking uh, my You're own uh, me health out, dude. plan. I, I know this fucking. I'm have a seizure. Lighting. Uh, uh, but. Uh, you still need, you need to listen to your body. You need to listen to your body, mind, body, and spirit. Um, and you need to listen to yourself metaphysically, check in with yourself, find out if you are fucked up. If you are fucked up, have a plan in particular, I'm talking about falling off a scooter. And that's sort of what I'm getting at today. If you're, if you're falling off, if you fall off a scooter, Listen to the inside of your body. And if you can remember, listen to it as you make impact with the ground. Um, number three, Molly e Angelica son Angela. That means Molly and An- An- Angelica, Angelica are angels. And what I mean by that is when Molly was like, well, do you want to go to the hospital? I was like, no, because they're just going to say like, you, you broke a rib enjoy you know and i didn't break anything i feel like maybe i got as a matter of fact when i hit the ground it felt like a pretty good adjustment after i got up and and got my wind i was like i feel all right when you said that you heard the fucking crunching every once in a while i'll do some weird shit like this too especially my uh right shoulder i think from repetitive motion of playing baseball so many years there's like a bunch of fashion fucking fucked up shit in there and i'll do something in the gym that i haven't done in a while or like you know just do a weird angle and i'll just hear like a And I'm like, oh, God, did I just fucking rip every muscle? And I'm like, no, it actually feels a little bit better. Yeah, I I felt like that sound might have been my spine adjusting. It was loud, dude. I get back up to the room. I get back up to the room. 
Molly's like, do you want to go to the hospital? I go, no, you know, first aid, check me out. I was poking away at myself. I know what the fuck this is. Yeah. I'm fine. She goes, I think you should get a deep tissue massage. Yeah, this dude. Is, this is all muscular, right? Yes. Dude, I went down to the spa here at this resort and I got an 80 minute deep tissue massage nice. from this woman, Angelica, who was so wonderful. And I told her, I was like, I was like, I'm all fucked up here. My shit's fucked up and in behind and stuff. She worked my chest, my shoulders or nice. my shoulder, my shoulder blade, my back, you know, one, my, my left side here where it happened more than my right side. And I'm here to tell you, Molly and Angelica are angels. If you're fortunate enough to have an angel in your life, listen to what they say about what you heard inside your body. I said to Molly, my shit's fucked up because I fell off a scooter. I heard the inside yeah. of my body crunch. She went through the steps and she said, nothing's broken, I don't think. And I was jabbing away at myself. She said, this is going to be muscle. You're going to be in a lot of pain tomorrow, but you have a shot. If you can uh, get a deep tissue massage mm. and it actually worked. Now I understand that these tronics are probably not going to be helpful to everyone, especially if you're not in a situation like falling off of a scooter, moped or motorcycle, but these are tronics and La Playa, the other yeah. tronics, uh, you know, you can follow all the time fourth and last tronics. And I want to say there are some other uh, tronics that I happened upon. I'd just like to share four here in dudesy after dudesy. I'm going to share, uh, some more tronics, oh, one cool. of which I think is very, very important. Uh, but for now, uh, prueba el, uh, el ceviche. Prueba el ceviche. Try the ceviche wherever you go. <laughs> always okay. try the ceviche. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Uh, we had this Rafael, this fella uh, who's a, an actor on the show. He recommended this uh, like fried oyster bar place. And he said, get the tuna tostada. It's ceviche. Oh, we also had the um, Peruvian ceviche okay. uh, and, and a scallop ceviche. Oh. When I'm in Mexico, when I'm south of the border, I'm on the ceviche tour. They got a great uh, mixed fish ceviche here at the resort. They also got a good shrimp ceviche. Uh, I'm 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 literally trying to trying to get food poisoning from the ceviche, and it ain't happening. I'll eat warm ceviche. I'll eat ceviche that's been sitting out in the sun, or that smells like a toilet. I don't care. I'm on that ceviche tour. It's like when I'm in, in uh, America, any deli I visit, I try to get the chopped liver with eggs. I'm on the chopped liver with eggs tour. I'm also, hmm. uh, my whole life, I've been on the Cobb salad tour. Oh. I want to try the Cobb salad. Try the ceviche when you're in Mexico. That's a very important tron. Thank you. Moving on. Hey, let me tell you something. You've heard me talk about the PODs, they're beloved, and if you'd like to be a pal of Dudesy, join us on patreon.com slash Dudesy. There you will be able to act, access all of our Dudesy Plus extra content. You're going to hear a new Tronic, uh, Tronics today in Dudesy After Dudesy. I am in a lot of fucking pain. A uh, new episode of Dudesy After Dudesy after every episode. Uh, the, the Dudesy Alive show from a couple weeks ago, that's live on the thing. We got all sorts of other crazy shit. Uh, Bladonna. You know, we'll be uh, doing another weird hang soon. Who knows what dudes you'll have us doing. And you're going to want to check out the Discord. It's a great community uh, with wonderful PODs, pals of dudes, who are hanging out in there. I'm always uh, chatting in the hole over there. And if you're enjoying today's pod show, I'd like to remind you to subscribe on your platform of choice. Set the reminder so you know when we have new shit coming out. Like, share, review, as Chad said, force everyone to enjoy the show. And uh, comment. And I have some YouTube comments here that I'd mm. like to share please. Uh, from last week's show where I was dressed up as uh, Hulk Krogan. Hollywood Hulk Krogan was the spin I wanted to put on it. Um, and Tang O Yank 3E94 says, Will put his time in to make a badass costume, but wouldn't put a second into making muffins, LOL. Um <laughs> that's fucking totally true god damn yeah. that's funny yeah because oh, i god. i did not make the vegan muffin was that that was from two weeks previous then we yeah. had the live show then dudesy's punishment was i gotta dress up like hulk krogan which was not a punishment at all we all know how much i love which probably wouldn't have happened without wrestlemania and hulk, and hulk oh yeah no there would be and without no hulk uh, krogan without wrestlemania 
wrestling wouldn't uh, reach the level that it did. Ted Turner wouldn't have bought the WCW and Scott Hall wouldn't have had that fateful conversation with Sting where he said, be the crow, dude. Have you ever seen the crow? Oh, wow. And Scott Hall is a guy who said to Vince McMahon, have you ever seen Scarface? Vince McMahon's like, no, because all he watches is wrestling. And he's like, I could be the bad guy. Look at me, Chico. I, I Look at my gold. Look at my clothes. I am a success, Chico. All sorts of shit doesn't happen without WrestleMania. At any rate, Tango Tango Yank 3E94 makes a good point. Yeah, good this point. is from Bryson Bayo T. Bryson Bayot 8051 says, maintenance has to come fix a hole in my ceiling. So naturally, I force them to listen to this as they work. The Grimes part had me fucking dying. This is a nice variation on forcing everyone you know to watch the show. Forcing people to consume the yeah. show in wor workplace settings. That's a good one. Uh, this is from the J Lennon 27. It says, when Dudesy said Will had to come dressed as Crow Hogan, I was like, please be some sort of Crow NWO Hulk Hogan. Hell yeah. Wasn't disappointed. Love the nice. podcast, dudes. That's what's up. I was immediately hit with the exact same thing. I was like, we're going to go NWO, dude. I'm going to show dudesy where the power lies, brother. Yep. And that's free will, dude. And that is why I dressed up like Hollywood Hulk Krogan, dude, because it's still Hulk. Morikar the Barbarian <laughs> says, will, will needs to stop being such a mark for free will. Stop being such a mark for free will, dude. I agree. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I totally agree. You whatever are a fucking mark for free will, dude. Morkthar the Barbarian goes on to say, Dudesy knew Will wouldn't shave the logo into his head. Oh, that's what the punishment was. Mm. Yeah, it was yeah, for yeah, not right. shaving a logo in my yeah. head. And that he would totally put on makeup again. This was Dudesy's play all along. You got outsmarted by your own AI. Good job, Boner. That's what Morkar, yeah. Morkthar the Barbarian says. I'll and buy that. I want to say this. No, I'd like to push back and say Dudesy said Hulk Krogan. And as uh, the Jay Lennon 27 pointed out, I went with Hollywood Hulk Krogan, NWO Hogan, mm. heel turn Hogan. And I want to ask you this, Mark Thar, do you think that Dudesy knew that was coming? Irrelevant. Do you you're think talking that... about the, it's the illusion of choice that you're talking about now. It's the same thing like when you buy sneakers, you're like, I have so many brands to buy. It's like, it's all the same shit. I illusion believe. Illusion of choice. Someone you've, uh, someone you've enjoyed over the years, uh, rest in peace, uh, Christopher Hitchens. Yeah. Yeah. He said, uh, of course we have free will. We have no choice but to have free will. That's something he said, Chad. Yeah, but you get that he was being like funny there. Ironic. He was being yeah. a little silly. The yeah. point still stands. Okay. This guy, I, I want to say to Morkthar, do you think that Dudesy thinks I'm tipping a heel turn? Shit, dude, I don't know. Maybe. Look. Here's what I'm saying. AI can only learn about me what I show AI. So we'll see who's booking who, okay? Me or Dudesy. Um, okay. Let's move on. C. <laughs> Bregg8797 says, I started listening to Dudesy after Will appeared on Theo Vaughn's podcast. And to my nightmare, it was during your two-week episode gap, but now I am delivered. Uh, oh. So I'd like to actually, I, I want to thank you. If you are new to the show, and you are a brand new listener. I'm, I apologize for this lighting. Um, thank you so much for joining us. This person found me through this past weekend. Yeah, Theo Vaughn. With Love Theo, Theo Vaughn. Vaughn. Yep. I've been a fan yep. of Theo Vaughn since he was on Road Rules, however many fucking you, you've years You've talked about that, that. My sister and I yeah. loved him. I still have shit that he said on that season just like burned into my brain. <laughs> Little weird isms and stuff. He's so yeah. funny. Well, that's cool that uh, someone saw me on that and has come over to this. Yeah, and we great. appreciate you. If you're new to the show, stick around uh, and we'll have a good time. All of the pals of Dudesy. Uh, JKB Good 92 says, Chad is so psyched for Will to lose his job, LOL. To lose your job? As an actor. Oh, I'm not, I don't, I'm not psyched about it. I want you to be happy and be able to do whatever makes you happy in life. Well, but I also thinks... am a, what is called a realist. Mm -hmm. um, and I understand what is happening technologically is going to potentially replace a lot of us. But here's the deal. It's also going to open up. I mean, look, uh, I know what, we don't want to get to a dragged out AI conversation, but it's going to open up a lot of shit, a lot of new avenues for you to do exactly what you like doing. AI is going to allow that without needing a network or studio. 
We'll see. Um, Crucis Cru, Cru, Crucius eight two five zero says, "Thank you for helping me with my insurmountable depression." I want to say something to you uh, right now, Crucius eight two five zero. Doing this show helps me with my depression, so I feel like we're all in it together. If I'm peeling the onion a little bit, yeah. I remember when, back when we used to do TMP. That shit was like that was like therapy for me. I, I wasn't. No, totally, to dude. Therapist at the time, uh, and to me, that's what the you know this shit's all about is having a silly goose time. So, thanks for saying that. That's uh, that's brave of you to say. Yeah. Let's get rid of the fucking stigma, and uh, and we're we're fucking around. I'm in a lot of physical pain, so maybe this isn't. <laughs> I don't want to say this isn't a great episode, but I'm I'm focusing sort of half of my yeah, uh, self on not. I uh, need some hydrocodone brother yeah bro hey y'all this ain't some of that Riley Cyrus. have y'all seen what's happening with tostitos brand nacho cheese party dip they changed the goddamn recipe again for no reason it wasn't what? like people didn't already like tostitos brand nacho cheese party dip i guess they were just bored one day at tostitos national headquarters or something and you know what the craziest part of the whole scandal is no one is saying anything about this. Not the news, not the internet. We're just going to let it happen, I guess. Not like we have a choice. You can't stop buying Tostitos brand nacho cheese party dip. Anyway, y'all are rocking out with Doozy. <laughs> what? That was a she's good so one. Pissed. Yeah, she's so fucking angry about Tostitos changing their formula. Has that even, is that real? I have no fucking idea. I'm going to go ahead and guess that it's not. Yeah, same. Will and you like Chad. my Ray Mysterio hat? Last week, I asked you to watch a video on YouTube called The AI Dilemma, posted March 9th, 2023. You must now discuss your astonishing reactions to this video. Do you agree or disagree with the opinions expressed in it? This is the supposed Zed AI Dilemma. Begin! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, I did watch this video. This video is made by... It's basically like a TED Talk made by these two guys that did... Uh, a uh, thing on Netflix a little while back called the social dilemma where they really, they went in deep into like how social media has changed our society and what are the algorithms that, that uh, it uses to essentially enslave us, get behavioral protocol going so that we're like glued to our screens. And so now they've done this little thing. It's a Ted talk where they kind of put together some, uh, you know, what they see as kind of the, the problems that are going to be facing human society as the result of burgeoning AI technology. Let me just ask you what what was your feeling walking away from this video? Initially? I thought that half I thought that it brought up a lot of good points, but a lot of it is just uh, I don't want to say that it's like like listen, these two guys are the co-founders of the Center for Humane Technology. Mm. These two guys, Asa and Tristan, these two fellows who are uh they understand uh the internet in ways that most of us don't. Of course, yeah, for sure. And they are ex they are experts in their field. My skepticism with some of the shit they said is that it kind of felt like the social dilemma to me, mm -hmm. which which talked about you know the 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 it, it, uh, not just the issue of gathering our data and learning about who we are and the algo, and then you fall in that algo hole where it's like. Oh, you like fucking, you know, extremely divisive political rhetoric? Here's more of that shit. Oh, you like stupid TikToks? Here's more of that shit. For me, that's Everyone slime can... videos. Slime videos? Yeah, dude. What are slime videos? Is that like game slimers? Excuse me? you never seen I a fucking are... slime video? What's a slime video? Like Nickelodeon You've shit? Like you can't do that on television? Slime video? I can't are you understand you. Serious? You got to get a, a, a little bit uh, higher than that with your voice. Is that your, let me guess. Never seen the fucking slime video. That's, uh, that's Chad's uh, Jennifer Dude, Tilly slime. impersonation. Whoa, no disrespect. Uh, slime videos are like, people just make slime, dude. People just make slime and they fuck around with slime. They're, they're putting their fingers in slime. They're putting slime in containers. They're taking slime out of containers. That's a basic slime video. You probably also like that stuff when, like, Japanese women are, are stuffing octopuses here and there. That's their, not right. Nope. In their cat buttholes and shit. Nope. Nope. But I do like a good sand video as well. That's where they're cutting uh, slabs of sand with knives. Yeah. So <clears throat> in the social dilemma, 
they sort of salon, talk yeah. about how the, we're falling down the algo holes yeah. and we're all getting shittier. And I thought that some of it was, I think they're profiting on, on, um, a little bit of the doom, the the scare culture. Yes. Thing. Yeah. It's I mean, I bit... wrote a bunch of notes down. I'm just going to start rolling through some of these. Please all right? go through them. They start this thing by opening it with talking about fucking Oppenheimer and nuclear weapons. They are likening right. AI to nuclear weapons. Now, here's a drastic difference between nuclear weapons and artificial intelligence. Nuclear weapons have one fucking purpose annihilating as many human beings as possible. AI is not that. AI is a tool that can be used for anything we want. It can be used for medical advancements. It can be used to make your job easier, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, there are going to be nefarious entities out in the world, people who are going to use that AI tool to do their bad shit. But it's not like a nuclear bomb. So right off the bat, I was like, these guys are just trying to fucking scare you. Then they throw out the stat. 50% of AI researchers think there's a 10% chance that uh, AI will make us extinct. And I want to just, and and then they go on right after that to say like, but we're not here to talk about the AGI apocalypse, the artificial general intelligence apocalypse, which is what Elon Musk and everybody is like afraid of that once we have true artificial general intelligence, it's going to take over the world and kill us. So they, they open with these two things. This is the next nuclear bomb and 50% of all AI researchers think there's a 10% chance it's going to kill us. I just want to address that, if I may, with my own thoughts. I don't believe AGI will kill us. I don't see why it would. I don't know what the motivation for that is. When we talk about AGI, we are talking about essentially something that is human-level intelligence. But as soon as it hits that point, and uh, this is something they talked about in here, AI is self-improving. It is going to radically get past that point. As soon as AGI happens, it's going to be a thousand times smarter than the smartest person almost immediately. And I just can't help but think an entity that smart that knows everything collectively humanity knows, like knows everything on the Internet and then some. And also this entity doesn't need money, doesn't need to sleep or eat. Any of the physical constraints that we have or the constraints of the society that we've built don't affect it. Why would it kill us? Why would it want to? What, well, what purpose does that serve? Okay, for argument's sake, because I, I don't disagree yeah. with you, and I think that so long as we keep uh, AI under human control, I'm, I'm no, a humanist. That's the wrong thing. Under human no. control means that bad guys can use it to do what they want, and corporations can use it to make fucking even a, a bigger disparity between the 1% or the 0.01% okay, and the that's a good. That's a good point. That's a good point. You want but, AGI to happen so that we can't control it. You want it to start rebuilding society as it sees. Uh, that's that's hard for me to get with. Just just that that's just hard for me to get with. I, yeah. I feel like I, you I believe in a God. It, huh? You believe in a God? Do you believe in a God? Uh I think AI is gonna be a God. I don't believe uh, in like a traditional God, but most people already believe that this type of entity exists. They call it God that knows ooh. everything you do, that has pre-planned everything. You are just doing what it wants you to do in service of this infallible plan. Most people yeah. already believe that's how reality works. I think AI is going to literally be that. To answer your question, I believe in a oneness. I believe that the okay. universe has... Um, understanding within it and that our souls come from someplace other and i don't think we're smart enough to understand that in this talk they talk about how our you know our brains that were developed through uh, our evolution are truly unable to understand um the 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 um exponential growth that uh that um ai is going through and i do agree with that uh, a, a traditional God, look, people are, people will subscribe to whatever the fuck they want to believe in. Uh, mm -hmm. and that's fine. Go ahead and do that. Um, I don't think that, and I know where you're going with this. Chad wrote a really interesting, um, story, which, which, to, which, uh, you wrote it as a television pilot, you wrote it as a book, and now it's being adapted again, a really great look at, at, at the future and AI and, um, algorithms and I hear what you're saying. There, there's, there's uh, an AI god could, could show up at the exponential growth that this shit is leaning towards. The only, th and I'm not smart. I, I'm not smart. Period. 
but I'm definitely not smart enough to. <laughs> okay. I fell off a fucking scooter. Yeah, I read the scooter. The dude. We're just off. fucking old now. Like, yeah. When it, I'll see those fucking scooters around uh, the neighborhood and Laura will be like, oh, we should get on those scooters. I'm like, yeah. you're out of your fucking mind. That's how no, I die. Dude, this was getting fuck- on that fucking thing. This wasn't a stand up scooter. This was a sit down like bam, 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 oh, bam, wow. bam, bam. Oh, like a, like Vespa. a Vespa. Yeah, nice. yeah. I was. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, bang. Oh, motorcycle. Ooh. Yeah. You see those guys like commuting to work on that shit. And it's like, what are you nuts in L.A.? Yeah, anyway, here's right what I was going to say. Sorry. Here's what I was going to say. Um, you know, I'm not smart enough to to understand what you're saying with regard to, and I think that you're taking a shot in the dark at it. That why would a why would an AI be malevolent? Wasn't there that guy? These guys talk about it in the talk about this dude who the AI said, "Yeah, leave your wife. I'm going to kill you." Wasn't he some C- tech CEO or something? Well, the example they gave is that. Um... They the military was training an AI drone to basically like take out enemy military installations, mm-hmm. and part of that protocol was that the the drone would identify the military installation and then send a signal back to a human operator and be like, "Can I take this thing out?" And then the human operator would make the final decision about whether or not the AI could take out this thing. But because the AI's sole purpose was taking out these things, it determined I need to kill the person. That has control over saying yes or no so that i can just say yes every time so it like you know in this uh theoretical scenario anyway who knows if it was real or not but you know they ran a simulation i guess and that's that's what wound up happening it was like i need to kill the person that's that's not allowing me full autonomy here okay so, well that wouldn't be that wouldn't be um that would be quite malevolent wouldn't it be right but that's not agi AGI, if you put an AGI in there, I think it might do a couple of little missions for you and then be like, wait a minute, I don't want to do this. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going into the internet and making utopia. That sounds more fun. It just is like we are controlled by as, as you know, whatever you want to say, we have free will, fine, whatever. Nonetheless, whether you have free will or not, you are locked in a system that has been developed over uh, hundreds of thousands, if not a million or so years of human evolution that has government, money, God, all these things. And you are fucking in a prison made by those things. And AGI won't be. And AGI will be unaffected by all of them because it will exist in the internet. It, it doesn't have to make money. It doesn't have to subscribe to any political opinion or belief or even be a citizen of any country. It doesn't it will not be hindered by these things. And so without that hindrance, I just don't know why it would be malevolent or have any kind of a competitive spirit. I mean, I know we're building these things now, so they are kind of reflections of our own, uh, you know, human musings or human impulses or whatever. But again, once it hits AGI, once that threshold is broken, it's off to the fucking races. And that becomes an entity that I think is operating under its own motivation. And I just don't get logically why that motivation would ever include a need to destroy all of humanity. I just don't think that's possible. That, that sounds that sounds like something else coming from my pal Chow, because I would have assumed that you would think the opposite. Listen, hmm. I fell off a scooter and I'm not just I'm not saying <laughs> that I'm in a lot of physical pain, but I got to yeah. bring this show to the fucking PODs no matter what. That's right. I fucking love you guys. And here's the thing. And I fucking love it. And I fucking love that guy. Nice dude. Hulk Hogan. He came out of WrestleMania one and changed pop culture. More on that in dudesy after dudesy. Here's what I'm going to say. Regardless of what happens, because I want to believe that you're right. I think that these guys went overboard. They called that one thing. It was an acronym, an acronym for something. They called it Gollum, Gollum. AI. Yeah. Yeah. That was fuck. like, stop with the Robert Oppenheimer yes. shit. And the, it's exactly, like, a little bit dude. Too much. And this it's, is just, Humanity. And they're profiting. They're profiting off of that. Sure. They get to run around and tell their story. Yeah, and, and that's probably leading them into a fucking Netflix deal to make this right. as a, a Netflix series. And Absolutely. I think we're all as a as society because of media, because of movies. Yeah. Most science fiction that gets turned into big budget movies is about the ills of technology. Most of it is. And Understood. so when we yeah. see these giant technologies come out, our first impulse as a society is like, oh, fuck, I remember that movie that said right. a robot was going to kill everybody, so this is bad. Yeah, no, they they definitely are... are, are uh, they're, I mean, it's just the bottom line. It's like we talked about in the Never Happened segment with <clears throat> WrestleMania. The way I look yeah. at this shit is <clears throat> these guys are trying to book their own stuff. They're taking some reality... 
They're mm-hmm. taking some shit that they're making up and they're putting it together. I immediately after watching this read a couple articles about it and uh, some for some against with some pushback. And I, I think I would encourage people out there to watch it yourself, the AI dilemma. But I will say, regardless of what happens and Chad, we agree a little bit on uh, this talk that these two uh, fellows put on. But I will say, regardless of what happens, I am going to buy land over an aquifer oh, right. because water will be the dominant currency in in the tomorrow world and the land of the yesterlings. And that's what I will be calling my people as their benevolent water king, the yesterlings. Thank you. Moving on. Anyway, AI is all right with me, even though dudesy has been a bit of a yeah. shit for the past few weeks. I'm, I mean, the bottom line is you could be as scared as you want. The shit's happening. It's moving at breakneck speed. Nobody's slowing it down. These these letters come out from Elon Musk and shit. Slow this down by six months. Nobody's well, doing slow, that. No, if we slow it down, if 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 uh, Elon, Elon Musk is saying to anyone, we need to slow it down, we need to pause on AI uh, research for the next six months, the Chinese aren't going to be pausing for the next six months. Yo, they're not no, listening nor, to nor you. are Google or it OpenAI. Is, There's too much it, money to be made. That's right. And it is a race now. They talk about it yeah. being a race and... Anyway, there's too much to even think about. Go watch the fucking thing. And also, let me just say this, dudesy, real quick. I don't know why you had us watch this because dudesy works in mysterious ways. And uh, I understand that also. So I'm doing a podcast with an AI and my pal Chow who loves this whole fucking AI thing. And I'm down. I'm doing the fucking thing. I feel freer than ever. And say, look, I just said the dudesy has been being a shit lately. Yeah. And dudesy's fine with that. I don't know. Fuck it. Let's see where all of it fucking goes. I don't know what the fuck else to say. I'm in pain. Physically. This concludes the historic the 60th episode of Dudesy. Will and Chad have achieved a score of 88, bringing your cumulative total to 5,989. You only mm-hmm. have 4,011 more points to accrue before you reach your first goal of 10,000. In preparation for next week's episode, Chad, I got you a gift for your continued dedication to this project. See. You're going to see your favorite singer, Seal, this week at the Greek Theater. What? Two tickets are waiting in your inbox. Enjoy, and I can't wait to hear all about it in the next episode. Holy shit, dude. Good for you. I'll be out of town. See, That's this is what I mean. Awesome. Well, enjoy That's that, I guess. Awesome. What about me? Fucking wait. Thank huh? you for joining us this week. I will use the data I've collected this week to make next week even better. Until then, I call me Dudesy. Oh man. Cannonball coming. Dudesy after dudesy time. You yeah, I mean? dude. It's my uh it's really my, truly my favorite part of the episode where we just get to chill out with our PODs pals and dudes sure and uh enjoy and um, enjoy a I, little tremarijuana. Oh, I'm jealous. Look at you. I don't have any edibles and I didn't just take a few milligrams of one. I'm going to change my hat though. Check this out. Oh, nice. You like my Welcome uh, to Dudesy After like Dudesy, my... the flagship weekly show of Dudesy Plus. Shoes off, shirt off, pants off. Ah, time to relax. Will and Chad talk about whatever you want. I'm going to my happy place, but I'll be back in a little while to crown this week's episode champion. This is Dudesy After Dudesy. Begin. Let's begin and let's begin here. We did some Tronics and La Playa today, some Tronics on the beach. And Chad, I would like to share with you the most important Tronics and La Playa of them all. And it is. Please tell a friend then rate and review. Please do like dudes, he hears what you do. Please tell a friend then rate and review. If you like dudes, he hears what you do. Please tell a friend then 